Hey friends, how's it going? Ash here with Gen Sense. Hope everybody's doing really well. I want to talk to you guys today about some fragrances that I wear just for myself. Stuff that I like, and I don't really care if anybody else likes. I don't care if nobody on this planet likes these. I'll still wear them just for myself. Maybe I'll be kicking around the house or something, but I'm still wearing them. Fragrances that I just like the smell of, fragrances that put me in a good mood, and maybe fragrances that for one reason or another, I'm attached to. Got a great mix here. We got designer, got niche, even got a little discontinued action. So let's jump into it and check these guys out. How do you like that background? Faked you out, made it green, figured mess with people's minds. What happened to the blue? It's still there. It's just temporarily changed to green. Yeah. Also, I want to let you guys know in case any of you are interested, there's a spring promotion going on with the Gallery of Parfums fragrances that I creatively directed, like this good old boy right here, Dream Woods. It's like you're in the woods, but it's a dream. And it's actually a pretty friggin' good deal, considering that the cost per kilogram on these fragrances rivals those of uh, brands like Zerzhov. So if you buy one fragrance, they take 40% off. That makes it about 123 bucks per bottle. If you buy two, it's 45% off. So then it's 112 bucks per bottle. You buy three, 50% off. Now it's $102 per bottle. And if you buy four or more, it's 55% off, $92 per bottle. Discounts are automatically applied to the cart when you add the fragrances in, so no codes or anything like that. And I think it's gonna run for about three weeks. So again, that's the whole line of Galleria fragrances that I creatively directed. There's a link in the description. Go check those out. And uh, those are gonna be the only ones. Those are the only Galleria Parfum fragrances, those seven, that's it, baby, that's it. All right, let's talk about these fragrances. You know how we're starting it off. You know how we're doing here. Dracar Noir from Guy La Roche. No, it's not a meme. I like it a lot. And yes, I have been on the hunt for multiple vintage bottles of Dracar Noir on eBay. And I'm gonna have them and just put them in my collection and maybe wear them like once a year. But the, the current formulation still works. It's still good stuff. It costs next to nothing. And it looks like it costs next to nothing. The cap is trash. This weighs, what, like one gram. They don't even bother putting a collar over the, uh, the crimp here. It's super cheap. It's the pinnacle of cheap, but I think it smells amazing. It throws me back because this was the first fragrance that I really truly wore all the time. And I was in elementary school. That's right. Rocking those 80s aromatic fougeres in third grade. Next up, uh, Prada. Prada Purple Rain. Yes, Purple Rain. What do you think of when you hear that? Of course, Prince. I mean, you gotta think of Prince, that's it, right? There is no other rain that is purple than that. Essentially, I think of this line as Prada's signature line, their private line, their higher end line, their upper echelon line. The bottles look nice and clean, heavily weighted. The cap is magnetic. It's a really nice presentation. And this is gonna remind you a lot of many other fragrances Prada has done, only taken up to another level. Do you have that powdery, floral, soapy, clean iris in here? Oh yes, you do. And it's turned up to 11. The only potential drawback to this is going to be that it does remind you of a lot of other things that Prada's done. But I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing because this is one of the better or best iterations of that style. Next, I wanna talk about this one, Monsiage Aviation Club. I've talked about this fragrance a number of times over the years. I got this, uh, I'm not exactly sure. Maybe six years ago, something like that. Could be seven, don't know. So the way that I came upon this fragrance was actually through Scent Trunk. Scent Trunk used to have a subscription service, which was really cool where they would match your profile to different fragrance samples that they would send you each month. So you would get a curated sample set each month with different indie and niche fragrances within it. Do I know if it was really truly curated all that much? Nah, I don't know, but they said it was. Anyway, one month I got this one in and I sprayed through that sample, used it up with the quickness and I had to buy a bottle and I did. Now I don't wear this super often, but when I do, I'll hit myself with a couple sprays, just breathe it in, 
and really enjoy it. Yeah, it sounds weird, like I'm talking about a, a fine wine or a fine cigar, but that's basically how I treat this scent. It's supposed to smell like a true gentleman's club, old wood, old leather, a uh, little bit of smoke from tobacco, things like that. It smells amazing. One of those fragrances that paints a picture of a scene, paints a picture of a place, invites you into that place, and you smell what it's like to be there. And of course, like always, I'll have these linked in the description below in case you want to check them out. After that little Paco action, Paco Raban XS, extreme. When normal excess is not enough, when pure excess is too pure, when you need to take it to the next level, Excess Extreme. It sounds like something a fragrance brand would write, something like that. So the original Excess, in case you're unaware of it, smells a bit similar to Creed's Himalaya. Paco Rabanne's Excess did come first, so it's one of those situations where Creed saw something else and said, eh, I like what you did there. It'd be a shame if somebody stole it. And Excess Extreme is, of course, a flanker of Excess, and it does have similarities to Creed Himalaya. It does have similarities to Paco Rabanne's Excess, which is a fragrance in and of itself that I like. And with this one being discontinued, it makes me like it even more. I'm weird like that. Discontinued stuff is interesting to me. Amped up, aromatic, and musky, Paco Rabanne Excess Extreme is a great smelling fragrance to me. Fresh, soapy, metallic, musky. And from there, let's talk about this one. Olfactive Studio Chambre Noir. What drew me to this fragrance initially was just the packaging, the name. It's simple, but I love it. They've gone away from this packaging style now. Uh, they were upset that this bottle, this bottle style, was being used by Zara for some fragrances. So Olfactive Studio had an Indiegogo, not a Kickstarter, but an Indiegogo. And they raised funds so they could do a bottle mold, like their own personal bottle mold. And they went away from these. But I did like this style, you know, that tape look of the label just slapped on the front there. I thought it was pretty cool. Anyway, the name, Chambre Noir, and then the picture, because each Olfactive Studio release has a picture that coincides with the fragrance. I loved it. Something about it was kind of dark, potentially foreboding, mysterious, even potentially depressing, depending on how you took the picture and the name together. So all of this put together really made me want to get the fragrance. I thought it was intriguing. Coming up with the story, of what does the picture mean with the fragrance and trying to like come up with this this lore this backstory for the fragrance the scent itself is a little bit similar to bentley from an intense or adulta luban it does smell better than bentley from an intense it's smoother it's richer it's less aggressive more wearable but it's going to give you a similar scent profile dark a little bit of resinous sweetness touch of spice really really good stuff and I would say that one, Still Life in Rio, and just Still Life, probably my favorites from the house. Unfortunately, I think that some of the fragrances they put out with the, uh, the pictures, the photographs that they have with them don't meld as well and don't create this, this kind of story that, that pulls me in. So some of them, I see the photo and I see the name and it doesn't really do anything for me, but that one does. Let's lighten things up a little bit with Mugler Cologne Fly Away. This is my favorite of the new Mugler Cologne fragrances. My wife loves this one. And the big drawing point for this is the grapefruit. The grapefruit in here is great. It's absolutely fantastic. It's more of a natural grapefruit. So you have that tartness along with the sweetness. Some people would compare that to light blue forever in the way, the style that the grapefruit is done. Also has a mysterious C note, as they call it, uh, C, like the letter C, not C is in the ocean. And pretty much everybody seems to agree that the mystery C note is cannabis because Mugler loves to do stuff like that. A mystery note? Oh, it's naughty. It's a naughty mystery note. But it still does smell great. Really nice summertime fragrance. Like I said, wife loves that one. Hopping back over to Niche, let's do Sultan Vetiver from Nishani. Every time I smell this, I fall more in love with it. Yeah. The Vetiver in here is so wearable and it doesn't fall into those, those tropes 
that some people associate vetiver with and fragrances of smelling like an old man fragrance or very dated, very fuddy-duddy and stuck up. You get so many different facets of vetiver here, so it doesn't just fall into one uh, descriptor. You know, it's not just grassy. It's not just dry, not just smoky or fresh or clean. It's all of those things. This is a go-to versatile fragrance. You can pull this off anywhere, anytime, any place and smell like a million bucks. And interestingly enough, when I was working on the gallery of Parfum Fragrances, the perfumer of Sultan Vetiver, Jorge Lee, gave me a submission that was a vetiver based fragrance because I would have loved to have done a vetiver scent. I still haven't and it's one of my favorite notes. And it was almost like you could have considered it a flanker of Sultan Vetiver or something. There were similarities there, but also differences. So it was its own thing, but you could kind of call it back to that one. And that's ultimately why I didn't go for it uh, because I felt like it was too close to Sultan Vetiver, but I still loved it. Maybe Nishane should take it and release it as a Sultan Vetiver flanker. That would be pretty awesome. From there, let's hop on over to Dolce & Gabbana's Intenso. This never did get a lot of love in the fragrance community. Most people wrote it off pretty much immediately. I ordered it right after it came out. I really like the presentation on it. I think it looks great. The dark look of the bottle with that matte finished cap, I think just looks really, really slick. It's pretty similar to Dolce & Gabbana's Pour Homme, but I would say that this actually smells better than the current iteration of Pour Homme that's on the market. So between the two, I'd go for Intenso all day. Now, maybe if you could find yourself a decently priced vintage bottle of Dolce & Gabbana Pour Homme, you would go for that but you can get this for cheap. So all things considered, if you're looking for that Dolce & Gabbana Pour Homme vibe, this is probably your best bet. It's a great office fragrance. I actually wore this heavily to the office for quite a while because it doesn't project monstrously, just enough to get you noticed when you're in proximity to people, close proximity. And it's a really nice, classy, gentlemanly kind of fragrance. Take things a bit darker next with Amouage Memoir Man. Just smelling this from the atomizer, you know you're in for a good time. Whoo! Green, woody, smoky, foresty, very, very good stuff, high quality. It is the type of fragrance that you have to wear with absolute confidence and certainty that you know you're pulling it off and you know you're pulling it off well. Otherwise, it's that kind of fragrance that's gonna end up wearing you and you're gonna feel all uncomfortable and not know if you smell nice or not. And if you're giving off those kind of vibes, you pretty much already lost. Amouage was really the first niche house that I collected along with Creed. So when I was very first getting into niche fragrances, it was like Creed was the easy to wear stuff, the easy to grasp stuff. And then Amouage was the higher quality, more interesting, more challenging, more complex fragrances. So you could still pull them off, but they definitely had more going on than the creeds. And so it was this nice juxtaposition of niche fragrances. Last but not least, Chopard Black Incense Malaki. The quality here is fantastic. Presentation is classy looking, but I do think the sticker slapped on the front looks a bit cheap. But when that's about the worst thing you can say about the fragrance is the sticker slapped on the front looks a little cheap, you know it's pretty good overall. It's dark, spicy, woody, smoky, very interesting, very complex. The type of fragrance that you just keep going back to and smelling over and over and over again. But it is also the type of fragrance, like the Amouage, that if you don't really feel comfortable wearing, you're probably not gonna appreciate it all that much. And if you're just getting into fragrances, you also probably won't appreciate it all that much. It is absolutely the kind of fragrance that collectors would say, oh, you've got to check it out. It's amazing. And then because it gets a good amount of love, a good amount of hype, people that are just really getting into fragrances will buy it, try it and go, what is everyone smoking? This is trash. How can I wear this? If you haven't smelled any of the Chopard fragrances though, absolutely check them out. Look at the note breakdowns, read some reviews because there are some hidden gems in there. And this is one of them. This is good. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me. 10 fragrances that I love that I wear for myself. I do not care 
if other people think these are awesome or not because I love them. And we've all got fragrances like that. Fragrances that just put a smile on your face. If it makes you happy, you wear it. I'm gonna head out of here. Thank you for hanging with me. Thanks for your support. Stay safe and I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later.